Welcome to LOA Today, Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Tom Wells here. Today is Monday, March the 26th, 2018, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, your first daily dose of happy for the day, and hope your week is off to a good start because that's the key to being in that high vibrational place, getting your week off to a good start. Uh, it's like, the, you know, that scene that they show in The Secret, the movie, Tom, where uh, the, the woman mm-hmm. wakes up and she stubs her toe and she all of a sudden she's got to run in her nylons and uh, the tube of toothpaste splatters all over the place and so forth and just turns into one bad thing after another. And then they show yeah. the same woman starting the same day all over again. This time she stubs her toe and she doesn't think anything about it and her nylons <laughs> don't run and her toothpaste doesn't overflow and she just, you know, no big deal. It just goes on with it, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, so uh-huh, it's, it's uh-huh. the attitude, right? God, it's everything, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, yeah. We have control, and uh, that's what this show's about today. It is. <laughs> it is indeed. So, uh, how are you? Did you have a good weekend? <clears throat> yeah, I had a real good weekend. I I went on a really great hike in the Rocky Mountains. You know, I live here in the foothills of the Rockies in right. Boulder, Colorado, and so I went on a beautiful hike because it's warm here now, unseasonably warm, unfortunately, mm. but it's really beautiful. And um, then I got two more hikes, another hike later that day, and then a hike yesterday. So I've had wow. three hikes over the weekend. Really nice. And, uh, yeah, it's been really great to be up in the mountains just with all the trees and the beauty. And yeah, it's great. Well, you can't <laughs> complain about a weekend too. like that. That's a great weekend. Oh. Yeah, I didn't expect it. I had all this stuff I was going to do because I've got to move out of the place I'm living. And I was thinking, okay, now I'm really going to dig into all this work. And I didn't. I went hiking. Mm, nature <laughs> called. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. Yeah, it did. And, and you know, I figured I'm going to I'm going to get this stuff done. And I, I'm glad because I my mind can tend to say, you know, you better just let everything fun go for a while and do your do the oh, work. Yeah. You know, and I, uh I've done get the same it done, thing. and then then go play. But and the worst life part often is, says to me, "Go play." And the worst part is, if you do that, you end up being not nearly as productive as as you would be if you uh, came, went and did the fun thing, came back, and now you're diving into it with enthusiasm. Now you get it done in like half mm-hmm. the time. But and that's what I did. I came back and I, yeah. I had like a two hour window before I had to go on and meet somebody, and and it was like during that two hours, I got done what. It could have easily taken me four hours, but yeah. I was just so focused, exactly. and I, I had to get it done in those two hours. <laughs> it's like the old saying: they want you, you're better off working smarter than harder. Yeah, yeah and smarter. Smarter means getting yourself into a well, not the way the, the cliche is normally used, but the way we use it is: smart, working smarter means getting yourself into a positive frame of mind before you even try to do anything. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so. it's all about the way we shape our lives with our thoughts. It yeah. and it isn't so much about um, you know, just putting in our effort like as as if the hard work alone was going to make it all happen. Yeah. Yeah, David and I had a little conversation about that yesterday about my own experience with working hard and how devastatingly unproductive it turned out to be over a 25 year period. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I've been doing it a huge amount of my life and I have such a strong ethic around, you know, work that um it's taking me years to relax and tell myself that's not how you want to get results, Tom. You want to get results from feeling good, having fun, being relaxed and allowing these things to come to you. And it's like, wow. That's a, such a different way than saying, okay, Isn't it's it? up to me. I got to make it happen. Oh, you know? yeah. It's so different. And you're right. It takes a lot of time. It, well, it depends on how long you've been living the other way. I mean, you and I went through large patches of time where we lived, you know, the nose to the grindstone approach. And yeah. if you have that habit built up over time, you know, that is a hard habit to reverse because, first of all, you have, like Abraham describes, they describe it as the negative momentum that's built up. So it takes some time to slow that momentum down. Um, but secondly, it's the habit, l- overcoming the habit. Those habits mm-hmm. are really deeply ingrained, which uh, which kind of ties into the topic because the topic is the subconscious mind. You you came up with an interesting title today. How did that title come up? Um, well, it just came up because I am 
been dealing with this in my life so much um, because there's certain things that I want to accomplish in my life that seemingly are taking a lot longer than, than that makes sense to me. And so, um, you know, over the last, I'd say several months, I've been sort of arriving at this conclusion that, well, when I was younger, I was programmed really strongly with beliefs and thoughts from my parents and teachers and society that, Mm -hmm. that, um, you know, that I am a certain way or that it takes a certain way of living to get results, like say, to get the amount of money that you want or to get the kind of relationships you want or to get the kind of health that you want, you know, Mm -hmm. you can take any area of your life. And if you're having difficulty in it, then you say, you know, then I could say to myself, well, um, if I'm not finding out how to arrive at the results I want, the manifestations, then I must maybe have some real strong beliefs inside me somewhere, you know, in my unconscious or subconscious that, um, that there's this wounded child in there or something that's still struggling and it doesn't, it doesn't know how to let go of its angst about the the situation and its fear about the situation or anger about the situation. And so subconsciously I sabotage myself from having what I want because um, these, these patterns are just running automatically inside me. I can't really see them all the time. And so I'm just sort of at their mercy you know, I'm just sort of the victim of the fact that I have these things going on inside me. And until they work themselves out, I'm not going to get the results I want. And that's sort of like the the reason why people go to psychiatrists and psychotherapists, because they, they want to dig in there and find, well, what is this thing that causes me to be perpetually, um, you know, say, in poverty or perpet- perpetually creating relationships that don't work out for me. You know, I've been through one man after another, one woman after another, and, and I still don't have the partner I want to have. And I've, you know, or, or they have a problem with drinking or a problem with sugar or a problem with their weight. You know, they're overweight all the time and can't understand how come I just can't break this pattern. In other words, things like that. That's where this, this title came from because Okay. There's in our society been a strong belief in something called the subconscious. So your position is that the subconscious doesn't exist or that it does exist, but it doesn't play a role. Clarify a bit. Well, the thing that I'm learning from reading and listening to Abraham's works anyway, the law of attraction is that there is really only conscious creation and conscious evolution and conscious um, altering of our patterns. So, you know, what, what, like what Abraham is saying is we put those thoughts in our mind at some point, we put those, we had those conscious thoughts that created whatever situation we created then. And whatever situation we're created now is still being created by our conscious thoughts. And anything that we want to do to alter it is going to happen by our conscious thoughts it's going to, it's all about choice. It's really is in our control. And, and by assigning it to the subconscious, essentially it just leads us nowhere. We don't really get anything out of believing that a subconscious is running us on some level and that it's, it's our problem, you know, that it's, that's a difficulty that, that we do not know how to solve. So in other words, getting confused and saying, I just don't know why. I just can't figure this out. You know, I just don't know why I can't figure out. Why do I keep doing this same thing over and over again? That is, you know, like, like me, I, I I have sinus symptoms. Why do I have sinus symptoms? Why do I wake up with sinus symptoms? I don't want sinus symptoms. And well, it must be something in my subconscious. And there, Abraham is saying, no, it's, it's the thoughts you're having right now is where you've got to put all your focus. So they're not really making a commentary on the subconscious mind's existence. They're just simply saying, don't look to answers, look to the subconscious mind for answers. Yeah, they're saying you can't, you can't get anywhere by saying there's some uncontrollable force that's, that's affecting me. Mm-hmm. There's well, some unknown sense. force. There's some unconscious thing that I just don't, I just don't get. And that's why I must be still having this problem. And I'm just going to have to figure out what that unconscious thing is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, that, that makes some sense. 
because certainly we don't want to spend a lot of time on you know, whatever that thing is in order to figure it all out and have all the answers before we take any action. Um, that, that's a mistake I've made numerous times, and I can attest to the fact that it is a non-productive way of going about it. <laughs> You're much better off you know, just starting to do the stuff that you actually have to do to, to, to shift the pattern. Um, I will say mm-hmm. that I've, I have found it to be helpful to me personally to have at least some idea of where it's all coming from and why it keeps coming back. I mean, I, I am a person who likes to explore the, the nitty gritty, the scientific side, you know, the, the, mm-hmm. I want to know all the details. So, mm-hmm. and, and that to me is interesting. That to me is actually fun to know that stuff. So there, that's yeah. where my interest comes into it. Um, but if I were pursuing it because, I was pursuing it out of dread, out of like, oh, God, i got to figure this out. Otherwise, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Well, I agree. That would not be productive. That would actually be counterproductive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, one thing I was saying about this show when we were talking a little bit before this this podcast is that it seems like as I talk about this stuff about the subconscious, in a way, I'm I'm forging each step, you know, that story of every step you take, a new stone appears in front of you. You know, you're, you don't know where you're going and you're, you're walking across the water and every step mm-hmm. you take a stone appears. Right. And then, and then, you know, the path that you're on you, cause you, you, you just keep going forward. I kind of feel that way about talking about these unconscious subconscious patterns that may be in me that came from my childhood you know, that are, that are so-called sabotaging aspects of my life. But really in talking about it, I don't really know where I'm going. All I know is that I feel like this is the right direction is to, is to begin to see that it's all about vibration and vibration is in my control. And there is a way to get so aware of what I'm doing in each area of my life, whether it's relationships, money, health, anything, say, I am creating this. How am I creating this? And what, what do I need to understand so that I have relief and I have the way forward for myself because I'm seeing the pattern I'm creating and I'm making a choice to no longer think in that way. And so, that's the crux of this whole thing for me is to get really clear that, oh, it's these thoughts about money that bring that result about money. And these are the thoughts I could have about money that would bring a different result. You know, this is the way I could change my feelings about money or this way I could change my feelings about relationships. And, you know, so it's, it's like, I know this is what Abraham is saying. You can get so conscious of, how you're creating your reality that that you are literally ecstatic and excited about the fact that you're understanding it and you're now thinking the thoughts that are producing the results that you want in your life and you start seeing those results show up and then yeah. it just feels so good mm-hmm. yeah that's true and it's it's one of those things that uh, for me the, the the approach that made the most sense for me the one that i keep going back to is my my go-to, so to speak, is I always want to work on building my combination of belief and feeling about something. Mm-hmm. And I really love, I, call, I go back to it over and over again, I really love what Abraham uh, said to define the word belief, that a belief is a thought we think over and over again. That mm-hmm. makes more sense to me than anything I've ever heard in any metaphysical yeah. circle I've ever attended. It, me too. It, it is the best thing I've ever heard. And mm-hmm. that concept re- re- reaffirms for me that I, it doesn't really matter whether I start off with the belief. What matters is I'm going to build the belief deliberately, intently. Yeah. And in the process of building the belief, the belief will come to me, which is bizarre. Right. I'm still getting used to that one. I mean, I've been practicing mm-hmm. that now for a number of years, and I'm still getting used to the idea that when I build the belief, I will believe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Do, do you have an do you have an example? <laughs> oh geez, I don't know. I mean, I guess almost anything that I've been growing with uh, for myself in the process of becoming a deliberate creator. Mm-hmm. But 
I mean, anything that I've run into where I find that I'm stumbling and I can't seem to figure out the answer, if I can remind myself, first of all, remember, and then remind myself, oh, yeah, all I have to do is build up a belief here and do it in an emotional way, a, a positively emotional way, preferably, because it's a positive subject that I'm going to focus on, not a negative one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I can do that, the belief will come and with it will come the results and, like you said, the excitement and the thrill and the knowledge and... Oh, geez. It, but, but every time it's the same thing. Every time it's reminding myself, oh, that's right. I don't have to already have the belief. I can build it from nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You can start with just like they were, Abraham was saying, you could, you could say, you could say to yourself, I'm really confused. I don't get it. I don't know why I'm this way in my life. I don't know why I keep creating these results in my life. This is so confusing. It, you know, and then of course you could add, it must be, you know, in my subconscious and I, and I just can't get to it. Mm. Or, or you could say, um, you know, um, the subconscious mind is a big topic. A lot of people talk about and a lot been written about it, but you know, I don't have to understand everything about it in time. You know, I'll understand more, but, but in the meantime, you know, for right now, I just want to feel better and, and I want to understand, you know, and I'm, and I feel like I can move forward and without having to understand everything. And you start to soothe yourself. You, you know, you start to say these things that lead you more in the, in the direction, you know, and then from that, I start to say to myself the positive things like, you know, I'm going to make the choice today to just feel good as much as I possibly can. And, you know, and, 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 you know, we, we meditate, you know, because that's, that's a time to just really show ourselves that touchstone of what it feels like to be still, what it feels like to have our thoughts not driving us, you know, what does it feel like just to be in our, follow our breath and just be with the, with breathing. And then from that place of peace, that place of calm, you know, then we see how we can go forward, but we can't stop throughout our day. Every time we have a thought and say, I'm going to just, you know, go sit down and meditate again. You know, I'd be doing it all day long, but, and that's, <laughs> <laughs> but that's not necessarily the way to go because it's just life doesn't let us do that that easy. Our, we're active, alive people. And so if, if we were, if we were like facing any and every situation throughout our day and able to, to find a way in our thinking to always turn it towards the positive, to always turn our, our direction towards the direction we want to go in, you know, like, well, what do I want in my life? I don't want this that's starting to feel negative. What do I want? I want to, I want to feel good. I want to, I want to go forward. I want to produce the results I want. So what, you know, how can I feel better? And, and then we start doing the activities and the thoughts that help us feel a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be like really where the work is. Oh yeah. I, I'm always amazed. I mean, not amazed, amused, I think is a better word. Um, David and I talked about this yesterday that Abraham uses the word action in a very specific way. And uh -huh. the way they use it is intended to exclude any mental activity. Now you and I might think of, of mental activity as a form of action and as a form of work. And, and I do, I think of it as work. Mm -hmm. But it's different from the way Abraham uses the word. When they talk about an action, they're talking about, you know, uh, you don't have any money, so you go get a job. And then you uh, you apply for a loan and you ask for somebody to give you a grant or a gift. And, and you, you know, you're doing physical actions in order to acquire the money that you're looking for. That, for them, is an action. And more specifically, for them, an action is usually described as an action without giving it pre-thought, without giving it the pre-belief building routine that we've been talking about. Mm. So, so it's important to understand that when Abraham uses the word action, they're using it very, very specifically. But you and I, I, I think of, of action as being inclusive of thinking. And that, that thinking process that we're talking about here is, in my opinion, work. You do have to do the work. You have to work it. You have to really work it. Sometimes you have to put yourself all the way into it just to, to start making some ground, just to start moving the needle, so to speak. But it's the only work that's really worth doing because it's the work that sets everything else up, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I've just noticed over the last four years that I've been practicing law of attraction so, you know, earnestly 
that there's a skill that is sort of being asked of me to develop. It seems like if you're into the law of attraction you and you listen to it a lot about, you know, from Abraham anyway, you or any of these other people who write about law of attraction, you get, I get one really strong message. And that is you, you've got to develop new ways of thinking. You, you, you know, if you've, if you've got a, a pattern that you run on yourself that leads you towards poverty or leads you towards poor relationships or leads you to isolation or leads you to feeling sick, um, whatever it is, you know, feeling, getting overweight, um, you know, doing too much alcohol, doing too much sugar, whatever is it that it's kind of like sabotaging your happiness, then you got to be able to look at how you're, what you're saying to yourself and then to choose things to say to yourself that are what you would prefer. And I mean, that's what I'm finding. I've got, I've got, I find these, I find that like, let's say I'm, I go out to the garage, I get in the car and I'm going to go see a friend and my mind is saying something that is not, that is, you know, I'm feeling worried or I'm feeling anxiety about something. And that's as I'm making that 15 minute drive to my friend's house, that's a chance to look at what I'm saying to myself and, and ask myself, do I want to be thinking those thoughts or do what's a thoughts I could be thinking that by the time I get to my friend's house, I'm going to be feeling a lot better. Mm. Or, or if I'm going to spend this two hours with my friend, how, what, what do I want to be talking to my friend about? Do I want to talk about the problem I have? Or do I want to talk about the solution I'm creating? And, and so that it's the words and the thoughts that I decide each moment going forward that are really shaping how I'm living and what's coming, what results are coming. And if I get really good at saying and thinking the things that I prefer in my life, if I become an, you know, in each area of my life, I'm really noticing what I've been saying to myself and what I'd rather be saying to myself. And I make those adjustments and I continually make those adjustments. I feel that's how the doors begin to open and things, you know, you just start seeing things manifesting. That's how I start seeing things manifesting in my life. When I just stick with the words that I'm saying to myself that are what I want to have happen. Oh, I agree. Yeah, that's that's where all the big moves happen. I mean, it's not like nothing ever happens from being involved in doing something because often stuff does happen. There are people yeah. who go through their entire lives as doers and have very successful lives in many ways. In other ways, not necessarily, but in, in many ways they do. I mean, there are people who make uh, millions of dollars, for instance, without having any clear idea of how the law of attraction works. And they just know they're, you know, they're, they're pounding it out, grinding it out, grinding it out, and, and they can succeed. That is possible to do. So it's not like action has no value, but yeah. I completely agree. This whole idea. And I'm not of, saying yet you're not doing action. No, no, yeah. not at all. Um, but I agree that, that if, if you aren't pre-planning it by getting yourself into that space and, and by taking those little steps to, you know, like you said, talk about solutions rather than talking about problems. So what I call the Abrahamic lessons. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's one of them. The, the idea that if you keep focusing on the problem, all you end up doing is getting more problems. Boy, do I know that one. I've proven that one to myself. I don't know how many times, over and over and over again. The more I, I'm like the consummate problem solver, and when I when I'm focusing on problems to solve them, I get two more, and then I get five more, and then I get ten more, and they just keep coming mm. at me and coming at me. I become I mean literally. Uh, th this is kind of a, a a joke, but it's also true. These days, when my sister calls me, when mm -hmm. I see her number on the phone, I get this little oh feeling inside. Not because I don't want to hear from my sister, but because I know she's calling me about a computer problem for me to solve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, here yeah. it comes again, right? <laughs> uh -huh. And of course, I'm happy to help her do it. But it just goes to show you, the more that you focus on problem, 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 you get more problem, problem, problem. Why not focus yeah. on solutions? Because if you focus on solutions, then you get solutions and all of a sudden the problems go away. And that's amazing. Yeah, really and, and if we say we're confused about our life situation. You know, I'm confused about losing weight and I just don't get it. You know, then we're going to stay in that place. Yeah. You know, because we're, we're declaring to the universe and our vibration becomes, I am confused. And from that place, you can't get unconfused. And so then you got to look for, well, what thoughts, what words and what feeling, especially what feeling of course would, right 
get me to be in a different place with this. And well, plus that place know, of being confused, you're going to get more opportunities to be confused. Yeah, that's the law exactly. of attraction. That's, I mean, that's what you were just saying. Yeah, yeah. That, that you've you've proved that to yourself over and over again. And and I I notice that I have this habit. I've had this habit of uh, of of kind of just deciding that. Um, how do I put this into words? That I'm that I'm just stuck uh, in something, and it's um, it's an it's an unknown or it's intractable in certain in this moment. Right, it feels right. intractable, <laughs> and um, and I feel stuck there, and then I accept that, and um, then it's just the way it is, or some. I I mean, it's sort of just like yeah, it, it becomes a default state that is a false default state, but it's something that is so familiar from my childhood or something in, you know, in my past, I developed a uh, comfort zone around feeling that I'm sort of stuck in this difficulty. And so it's, um, it's just that way. And, and I would like it to change and I don't really know how to change it. I'm sort of confused about it instead of the way that law of attraction, way Abraham says is you got to, sort of look at that situation and see that if there's an emotion around it, then you are actively attracting. So if it's a positive emotion, you're attracting what you want. If it's a negative emotion, you're attracting what you don't want. Right. If there's no emotion, if you feel neutral about it, what they say is, well, then it's not a big enough deal to really be worried about. So just relax about it. You know, if you don't like if, if, if I'm really concerned about making more money and I just sort of feel, you know, vague about it. I don't really have a big emotion around it. Then it's not a big deal to me at that moment anyway. And then when I feel angst about it and like wake up at four in the morning feeling, you know, I got to make more money. (laughs) Well, then it's like, they're saying, then you want to look at that. You want to, well, what is it that's waking me up at four in the morning worried? You know, Mm -hmm. not that that happens very often, but it used to, that used to be what happened to me all the time. And, um, you know, because I've, I've learned that I can, think and feel into abundance and accept my abundance, then I have more abundance, Mm -hmm. you know, now then I I feel more abundant in my life all the time now, because not all the time. Sometimes I still believe in this, in the, in poverty and in lack. And then I've got to say, okay, what if it starts to get a strong feeling, like I want to go buy something, but I don't feel like I have the money. I say, Oh, I can't afford it. Then I get this sense of lack. And then that, that makes me feel bad. You know, I says, well, my friend can afford it. Why can't I afford it? Then, then that's what I need to look at. It's like, well, what are the thoughts I'm having around that? Well, the thoughts I'm having are that it's hard to make money or, um, you know, it's like they're, that person, you know, is luckier than me or whatever it is that I'm thinking is I've got to look at it and say, now what's the thoughts that would lead towards more abundance? You know? Yes. Well, you know, and then I say to myself, well, it's like a thought that, um, well, you know, I am really doing really good um, things in my life to bring about more uh, income. You know, I'm developing this aspect of my business and that aspect of my business. And there's really incredible possibilities there. And the universe is abundant anyway. It, it's, it's the law of abundance is as strong as the law of attraction. And I really do believe that. So I, it's like, I can, I can let go and trust more that my abundance is coming. It's I've, I must've put it into my vortex. There's a tremendous amount of abundance in my vortex. So I can, you know, and that's the kind of thoughts that I feel like cultivating. Those are the, what Abraham's talking about rather than feeling like, well, it's just, it's just confusing. I just don't, I just don't know why I, I don't make more money, you know? Um, it must be something, you know, my, my parents never made that much money and maybe that's why, you know. And well, it's a great example. I mean, this whole idea of, of when we are in a position where we want to buy something and there's not enough money in the bank and so we feel the lack. And then what, what we would want to do in those situations is to remember to reorient ourselves toward thinking about the, the feeling and the excitement and the solution and not focusing on the problem. But what we end up doing is focusing on the problem and saying, well, okay, so where's the money going to come from? <laughs> I got to figure this part out, right? I got to figure out where the money's going to come from. I got I to solve this by, by focusing yeah. on the problem. 
And the more I focus mm-hmm. on this problem, the more I'm going to solve it. Uh-huh. And that's the, that's the defect. That's the fallacy right there. The more I focus on this problem, the more I'm going to solve it. And it's yeah. not true. The, the way you focus, the, the way you solve a problem is by focusing on solution, not on focusing on problem. But we focus on problem. We focus yeah. on it regularly. And then we keep going back to it. And then we wonder why the money isn't showing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, you know, we're when we're focusing on the difficulties we're having and we're we're sort of raging against them or struggling against them or efforting and trying hard and worrying and feeling anxiety and angst. That's all symptomatic of rowing our boat upstream. Right. You know, we're, we're, we're it's sort of, I mean, I love the analogy of being in a stream because I've done so much, you know, um, so many trips on rivers, you know, where you get in a canoe or you oh, get right, in a yeah. raft and you're, you know, when you try to go up that, current you know it, it's a it's a whole different story than letting go of the oars and and the literally the the bow of your canoe or your raft will literally turn around, turn around. and go downstream yes. <laughs> which is bizarre <laughs> it's fantastic <laughs> I mean, because and, and that's what and that's what it really is with this law of attraction is that if we're struggling and trying and, and have angst and worry and anxiety and fear about our money situation, our relationship situation, our health situation, we need to let go of the oars of struggle first. Mm. We, we need to quit trying to row upstream. And like you say, you know, like what action can I do? How can I change all this? It's, it's sort of like the, that's why when you, when you meditate, for example, you're letting go of the oars, you know, you're, you know, or we were saying, you know, you follow your breath, you know, you, you, you just, let's say you're just in the middle of your day and, and um, you're in a heated conversation with somebody and it's not going anywhere, you can just, you know, start to just follow your breath and let go of the oars of trying so hard to win this person to, the, to your side of the argument. And you just sort of let go and the bow of your boat turns and, and you start flowing with a different current. And then maybe you start listening to them or maybe you say, hey, you know what? I got to go. <laughs> I just remember to have an appointment. Um you know, and you you change the whole vibration of the struggle that you were caught up in. It's interesting too. You you cued something in my mind as you were describing that. I'm actually in a situation right now. It's with a client. Um, this particular client hosts a website with me, and I, I've been hosting his website for over ten years now. He's a long term uh-huh. client. Um, he recently, I won't go into all the details of his situation because obviously that's his business, but for, for reasons that made sense, he basically gave control of his domain name over to someone else in the company um, that he owns. And this other person is actually two people. One of those two is the, quote, technical expert, unquote, who, as it turns out, is more of a dilettante than a technical expert. And uh-huh. this, this dilettante is creating all kinds of problems with his you know, claim that he knows all this stuff that he really doesn't know at all. <laughs> and then mm. he tries to act on it, and of course, produces bad results. And so, you know, it, it wreaks havoc for my friend, my client, um, because my client keeps getting the blame for the fact that, you know, this guy doesn't know what he's doing, and, and the, the guy is blaming me. You know, I'm the provider, so it must be the provider's fault, right? Well, mm. I decided today, this morning, that, you know what? I'm not going to play that game anymore. And And mm-hmm. so I'm actually... I, I sent a private uh, email to my friend to, to say, are you on board with what I want to do? I'm, I'm going to fire them. I'm going to mm. fire them as a client because I don't want to be part of their their whole churned up angst, you know, problem driven driven mess that they're creating. I just don't want to be a part uh-huh. of it anymore. It's uh-huh. not worth it. Uh-huh. I mean, I collect 10 bucks a month for the hosting. It's, this is not like it's worth a whole lot of my time anyway. <laughs> now, what I could be doing is I could be getting, you know, getting ready to go to war and I'm going to fight this guy. I'm going to push him. I'm going to you're like, I'm going to put you in your place and all that. And I'm saying, uh-huh. no, I want to let this go. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to lose my friend in terms of uh, being his host anymore. But, hey, I'm not, he's not even my client anymore. He passed it along to this other guy. This other guy's uh-huh. my client. And I don't want him as a client. So why mm-hmm. am I messing around with this anymore? Uh-huh. And when I made the decision to do that this morning, oh, what a relief that was. Because yeah. I'm just saying I'm not going to be part of that problem-creating mess. I'm going to mm-hmm. just be part of solutions from now on. It's so much easier that way. And when, and when you relax like that 
and you, you, you turn your boat and go with the flow of what your life is calling you, then you're, you're aligning with yourself. You're aligning with who you really are. And you're saying, okay, I'm letting myself go easy. I'm going to relax. I'm going to go in a different direction. Let it, I'm letting go of the attachment I had to that situation right. you know, with the $10 or whatever. Yeah. And, and, you know, then you're open yourself towards the next best thing that'll flow into your life, which you know, whatever that is, it might just be, you know, you're going to go have a great breakfast. I mean, I don't know, but it's <laughs> well, it almost anything. I mean, you. The, the huh? last thing I want to do is spend a whole lot of time at $10 a month you know, trying right. to sell yeah. somebody else's problem. So it doesn't matter what I do. Anything's going to be better than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Oh, boy. But it just shows we can easily get tied up in stuff just because we don't take a moment to stop and ask ourselves, what is it that we want? Not what is it we don't want. We know what we don't want. It's very clear what I don't want is to have to deal with this idiot, right? Mm, That's easy. Mm. I know that one. Yeah. But yeah. What, what do I typically do? Or not now anymore. What, I, what was my past pattern? My past pattern was to try to figure out how to deal with this guy. You know, how to put him in his place or push him out of the way or do whatever I needed to do to keep the, the client relationship going. Mm -hmm. For $10 a month. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, as I described that, I think to myself, what was I thinking <laughs> all those years mm -hmm. ago when I would do that? What was, mm -hmm. what was the point of all that? It was crazy. It was totally insane. Mm -hmm. But it was the habit. It was what I was used yeah. to doing. I was always trying to fight for the client. I was always trying to help the client. I was always trying to you know, make the client my top priority. And the, the part of the philosophy there is that when you do that, then when they have other work to, that needs to be done that's you know, it's actually worth doing, then they bring you to work, and that's true. Uh, but the point that you have to take into account here is how much angst is it worth going through in order to have the hope that they're going to bring you some larger paying work? Yeah. Yeah, I can relate. Yeah. And there's a lot of things like that that I do in my life that are the same, you know, just in different arenas of life, and they all represent um, – Exp expended thought and expended negative energy, negative feelings that um, are simply an old habit way of acting, an old paradigm, mm -hmm. I call it way of acting that yep. can be replaced with a new, fresher perspective. And meditation is a great place to start because it gives me a touchstone that that when I when I feel that great calm and peace inside, and, and I and I know my boat is flowing downstream, then I say, okay, how do I create this feeling throughout my day in every arena of my life, like where I can just chill out and relax, and then and then just look at at what it is I really want, and then let it in, you know, because um, in a lot of ways everything that we want is already queued up for us. You know, it's, it, we really have put so much asking into the universe, into our vortex of what it is that we want in our lives. And now are we able to relax and let it in? And so that's what I find is so exhilarating. Like for example, and I was saying before in the arena of dating, which I'm doing a bit of these days and finding that, you know, the different women that I meet and the way those dates come off has so much to do with the amount that I just trust that each time I meet a new person, it's going to be an, an, an exhilarating experience. It's going to be really interesting. It's going to be fun. I'm going to learn something about myself. I'm going to learn incredible things about her. And I'm going to get a, a better vision of the woman that I really want to be with. And maybe it'll even be her, you know? Yeah, it could be. I mean, that, that's the thing. You're, you're taking the time. You're taking the energy, and more importantly, you're taking the attention toward continuously saying, I like this part, I don't like that, I'm, I don't want that, I prefer this, I prefer this, and I don't prefer that. And through that process, you are actually not just narrowing down for yourself, but you're also making clear to the universe what it is you really do want. That, that's the thing yeah, that's, the, that's amazing. Yeah. So often we go through life describing what we don't want. And we think somehow in our minds, we somehow come to the conclusion that if we keep focusing on all the things we don't want, that somehow that will translate to what we do want. Mm -hmm. And as I state that, it sounds crazy to say that, but how often do we do that? I mean, it happens so often in our lives. A lot, a lot of relationships, you know, people, people feel like, well, I can only probably get some of what I want. So I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> I'm sacrifice. just going to, you know, I'm going to, well, I've, I've heard different 
people I've talked to recently talking about their past relationships and saying, well, you know, I knew that, you know, he didn't have this quality. He didn't have that quality. And, and he, he did have, you know, problem with drinking and he did have, you know, problem with uh, womanizing, but I kind of felt like those things, I could live with those things. I could make it work. And, and, uh, and they weren't really that big a problem, but then they ended up becoming, you know, so big that I had to finally leave him, you know, and, mm. and it's, you just think, I think to myself, you know, yeah, we, we just don't believe that we can have what we want and we don't know how to, how to um, let it come from the universe. You know, we don't, we don't know how to let the thing that's in our vortex come to us in the full blown awesome version that it's meant to be, you know, like the right. career we really want, you know, the relationship we really want, the house we really want to live in, the amount of money we'd really like to have. You know, I noticed that like I, it's, it's easy for me to say it's that it's difficult to get it. Therefore I'll settle. And I'll so many people some, too, they'll, not only will they settle, they'll settle with the idea of fixing the other person. Right. Which right. when you, when or you living, say it out loud, it sounds with, crazy, but it's, but that's I'm what sorry. somebody, I, I was just saying when, when you say that out loud, it sounds crazy. And yet that's what so many people do. They try to fix the uh -huh. other person. And then when they can't fix the other person, their own lives become more miserable and they don't understand why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or they, or they settle for a certain level of a job or a certain level yep. of poverty. Yep. And it's not that you can't have all those things and make it, make the best of it and make it and then it will open up doors to to more um unfolding of what you do have in your vortex so what it is you do want so i mean there the thing that i like there's nothing wrong with anywhere that we're at at any given moment it's just that um we we can look at it and say could i become a more accurate a less sloppy thinker a more a more focused thinker and a more focused on the feelings i want the thoughts and feelings i want and could I open up more to to allowing myself to have a more exciting, fun, f you know, fulfilling, peaceful, happy life? Because right. that's really all we, that's really all I want. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, the thing I want out of everything I say I want is is the thing that's available to me in any situation I'm in. And that is relax, point my boat downstream and go with the flow of whatever it is that's happening. And then that opens the door to more of what I want to come in. So that's where it comes back to the thing of you, if you're enjoying your journey, you're going to get to where you want to get to. You know? It's true. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the more, that, the more that we enjoy it, the more, the more we get opportunities to enjoy more things. That, that, that's the law of attraction thing kicking into gear there. Um, similarly, if we are spending our time, time trying, spending our time trying, why is that difficult to say? Spending our time trying. Say it 10 times really fun. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Spending our time trying to, I don't know, that's, that sounds. It's one of those tongue twisters. But the, yeah. we spend our time trying to uh, focus on, okay, how can I make the best of this? How can I fix this situation? How can I get it better? And we forget that, yeah, there's nothing really wrong with having gotten ourselves into a situation like that in the first place. That's fine. It's just that we have to remind ourselves we don't have to live there. This is not the final destination. Okay, mm -hmm. so, all right, so I made a mistake. I got myself into a relationship or I got myself a job that I don't like or I got myself this or that and it's not where I want to be. Well, that's good news. That's not bad news. The good news is that you got to a place and you, you have the opportunity to make a preference. You know, say, I prefer this or I don't prefer that. And now you've helped to define what it is that you want and what it is that you don't want. And that's good. That's a good thing. The mm -hmm. only mistake is believing you have to stay there. Because these these relationships we enter, the these jobs we enter, um, the you know the health states that we enter, friendships that we enter, no matter what we're talking about, they are not destinations. They are milestones on the journey of life, and that's all they are. They're milestones. So the question is, mm -hmm. are you going to stay at mile fifty six, or are you going to go for mile fifty seven? Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. It's uh, I've. I've heard this thing from Abraham long ago where they said, and of course they've, they still saying it, I'm sure, but is that your source will always orchestrate the most perfect way for your life to unfold. You know, so your higher self, your, your source self, this thing that we call God or whatever it is, is always orchestrating our lives in the way that's the most wonderful for us. And so, so to believe that, is is a huge step for me on the path of 
understanding that everything's okay. And that, you know, like, like I went out with this person yesterday, um, this woman, you know, and, and, and I saw certain qualities in her that I've never seen in any other woman that I've gone out with. And it, it was exactly where I'm at. It was exactly what I needed to see um, in, in a partner, in a potential partner, these really beautiful qualities. And then there were certain qualities that would not work for me mm-hmm. that I knew that just, just would not work for me. And I think she knew it too, because we both parted with no question that we were not going to see each other, but it was so beautiful, the relationship. It was like, I met an incredible kindred spirit. She met an incredible kindred spirit. We both were in agreement that this is not to be pursued because the chemistry wasn't there. And yet, you know, I enriched my life so much. And so that, you know, that's what I keep experiencing dating is that it's an unfolding of enrichment. Mm. It's an unfolding of understanding deeper into relationship. And that's a precious thing. That's a, that's a priceless thing. You know, I, I, I can fall more in love with human beings, actually, you know, with, (laughs) with all, with all women, because I'm, I'm meeting all these different types of women and it makes me just appreciate deeper every woman but also just the human being who i'm meeting and um and then i feel like i'm also inching closer towards somebody that i could be in relationship and maybe this is literally the training i need to love somebody really deeply you know because i'm developing appreciation by being so generously open to the different women i'm meeting without being judgmental about them or I'm, I'm getting a mirror of my own judgmentalism. If I am being critical, you know, mm-hmm. then I see a real mirror of that. And I see, well, that's the way I judge myself. You know, that's, and now I'm judging that woman in a way that I judge myself. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the fact is when we go through life and we experience, you know, we're working our way through the selection process because that's what you're doing. You're working through the selection yeah. process. You're, you're meeting right. one and you're deciding yes, no, yes, no. Go to the next person. Yes, no, yes, no. You're, you're, you're refining and refining and refining. Well, that's the selection process. And as you're going through the selection Mm -hmm. process, you're actually going through a process of not just defining for the universe what it is that you want and what it is that you don't want so that the universe knows what to deliver to you, but you're also creating life experience. And in that life experience, all kinds of stuff comes out of it. I mean, you Mm -hmm. never know what it's going to be, and you never know where it's going to go. If there's anything I've learned for sure about how the law of attraction works, it's that I am terrible at predicting how it's going to go. Mm. <laughs> I'm just yes, really bad yes. at it because yeah. and the, the the scripts that get written along the way, you know, the, the script of well, here's what happened, this happened, followed by that, followed by that, are so ridiculous in many cases, so preposterous that if I were to write it up and send it to Hollywood, they would reject it as being too unbelievable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's yeah. the way it tends to work, right? Yeah. Well, it's it's like uh, like in the dating thing again. If I'm I'm sometimes seeing that. You know, I could I could literally imagine myself circling back and getting hooked up with some woman that I had previously thought it was impossible to be in relationship with. But I but because of the way I've changing, you know, that I'm evolving and, and then I, I start seeing, oh, you know, that 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 woman is actually maybe really great for me, you know, and and then I still don't even have to make a f- some firm decision i can, i might say she's great for me because we like to go dancing together and we we really have fun you know so we i'm gonna still see her once in a while and yeah. we'll see and but that could a year from now i could find myself living with her you know going yeah gee that was funny how that all evolved but it, it's really cool that it did mm-hmm. you know um turned out to be really great for me so i feel like just being really open like you say you know you're you're having life experience and life experience is what we're here for. <laughs> right. That's exactly so when right. I, when I met that woman yesterday, it was like, all I felt was I want to be her present every second with this woman so that I can be in a good experience, you know? And, and there wasn't a part of me that says oh, I got to get away from her. Cause I know, cause I knew right away pretty quickly that I didn't probably wasn't going to pursue something with her, but I had an incredible two hours with her and it was such a great discussion. We went all over the map. And I found myself even going, God, you know, there might be a lot more to this, <laughs> to this woman than I, you know, and the possibility of relationship here than I think, you know. Oh, sir. So I, op- I open the doors, you know, and I, and I don't, I'm not really going to probably walk through those doors tomorrow or anything, but I don't know. Maybe I'll end up calling her in a month and saying, Hey, you want to go out for dinner? And, and, and I'll, and I'll have another time with her and we'll see how that goes. So, well, that's what happened with me and Louise. 
When uh-huh. Louise and I met, I, I know what date we met. We met May 2nd, 1998. And so this coming May 2nd, we're truly celebrating our 20th anniversary of having met. Congratulations. I, uh, thank you. And on that day we met, Tom, there was absolutely no chemistry at all. In fact, she didn't even look me in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember you were saying that. You were she telling couldn't that even look story, at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. couldn't even look at me. And yeah. I came away from that saying, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> this is not going anywhere. I could just tell. Yeah. Yeah. And then you gave it another try. and Only and because a friend suggested that. it to me. A friend said, give it, you know, the, actually, it was the same friend yeah. who introduced us. She said, give yeah. it the three-date rule. And I said, what's the three-date rule? I've never heard of that. And so I did. It, you know, it, it stretched out over, like you said, about a period of a month. And a month later, we were together. Now, if, mm-hmm. if you had asked me that day, could I predict that? I would have said, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been my reaction. But yeah. that's what happened. That's the thing I like about about living in the moment and um, you know, being able to be, um, what's the word, receptive and mm-hmm. being really open to whatever the universe might be showing us and trusting. I don't know. I like the word trust because – I, I feel like there is something I'm trusting there. It, it, others would say, well, you, you know, it's a knowing. And I, I, to me, it's both. You know, it's a trust and a knowing that everything's okay. And it's, it is on, everything is unfolding okay. And it's actually going to work out really well. And I just need to align with that feeling that everything is okay. Mm-hmm. And everything is working out just fine. And not go to the place of, feeling like I'm confused about dating. I'm confused about how come I still don't have this partner in my life, this ideal person that's my partner. How come how come it's been, you know, four years of or three years of dating, you know, and <laughs> I haven't dated that much, but it's an I've dated enough. And 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 you know, and so oh it must be something in my subconscious that's um blocking maybe I really, you know, don't know how to give my heart to someone I don't know how to really love. And therefore, I should really figure that out. And it's it's not that I shouldn't, you know, look at that stuff. But it's really, if I say I'm confused about it, then I'm I'm going to definitely then stay in a holding pattern. The way I look at it, if I if I say I'm confused and just sort of give up to confusion and say I just don't know how to date, you know, I've I've met a number of people who just feel that way about dating. They say it's just. I, it's just confusing and it's difficult and, and I just don't want to do it, you know, and then they give up and then they're in a, a zone where, yeah, nobody's asking them out for two years. You know, I remember um, the first time I heard the phrase um, self-fulfilling prophecy. I thought it was mm-hmm. a good phrase. I thought it was, you know, that was interesting. I, I, cause I could see that there were times where, where maybe there were self-fulfilling prophecies. And, and mm-hmm. so it seemed like a useful concept to me. What I did not realize at the time is that they're all self-fulfilling prophecies. <laughs> that every single thought that we're focusing on is a self-fulfilling prophecy. So yeah. if, if we're focusing on, well, there's something, must be something wrong with me, something I got to delve into my self, subconscious mind, then you're right. And if you come to the conclusion that, no, it's not the subconscious mind, it's, it's got to be that I just have to change what I'm focusing on, then you're right. Yeah, <laughs> and they're both correct that's right. <laughs> because that's what they lead to. They lead to more of the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I guess the thing that I'm looking at, well, what, but which one will um, allow me to feel excitement and fun and ease and and happiness in my life as I'm exactly. on the journey towards something, and which ones will actually get me to where I want to get to? And that so that's luckily. Luckily, the answer is the same for both is yep. that if you choose the things that feel a little better and continually say, which ones give me relief, which thoughts give me feelings of possibility and ease and, and hopefulness and says, then that's the stuff that lets you get into your vortex. That's what takes you into your vortex. And that in your vortex is where everything you want. So being in my vortex is being in a feeling of the fact that oh it feels good i feel like i'm i feel like i'm unfolding my business in the right way i feel like i'm unfolding my relationship my dating in the right way or i feel like i'm taking care of my health in a way that is really getting rid of my symptoms you know it really feels like this is the right direction to go i'm going to instead of eating the chocolate eclair i'm going to have the carrot stick you know <laughs> and the really good news there is all that all this proves 
is just how powerful we really are. Literally, we get to do and experience anything we want to experience just through the power of our thoughts. It's just that we have to apply ourselves in a particular diligent way, in a particular way of, of you know, disciplining our mind, so to speak, to focus in the way that's productive to what it is we most want. Mm-hmm. But that's a skill we can learn. So, mm-hmm. you know, all we do is learn the skill. Well, all we do, you know, a lot of us are spending large portions of our lives learning how to do the skill. But the point is, it is within our power. Yeah. The fact that it's within our power is empowering. That's where the word comes from. It's empowering because it's already in our power and we're discovering that. That's a good thing. That's a really good thing. And that's the thing to celebrate every day. I, I actually include some aspect of that every day when I do uh, my mirror work. My mirror work is, mm. is essentially saying, I am so glad we are doing what we're doing. I am so glad we have the power to do it and that we're exercising it. Mm. And you know, it just reinforces for me over and over again every single day, I have the power. It's mine. Mm. Yeah. And it can't be taken away from me. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Take take away that victim feeling that Absolutely. Um, I've been a victim long it, enough. I'm like I'm yeah. done with it. It's over. It's gone. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, that I'm ineffective or that I've got a problem that's intractable. I just can't get beyond it. Um it's just it's something's haunting me. I'm possessed with evil spirits. <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever whatever it is that makes us feel like hopeless. Um it's funny yeah to even go to that place and yet you know we do it and i do it and and i i'm doing it less and less all the time but learning how to learning how i do it and how i can let go of the of that rowing upstream process that's going on um i I notice how many times abraham comes back to the fact that the the one thing that we're where we that that throws us off is that we think we have to work so hard at things we think that trying and struggling is necessary and um and we don't understand that that so much of what we want is going to come from relaxing having fun (laughs) going with the flow asking ourselves what feels better and then doing those things and and sure enough our lives will get better and it's um it just to me it's amazing that it could really be that simple it reminds me of the, talking uh, about, oh, sorry. when you no, look, go ahead. Oh, I'm just saying they, they were talking about when you look at little kids, you know, that's, that's kind of what they do. They're just, they're just going from one exciting, fun thing to another. Mm-hmm. Generally, you know, generally, yeah, most, yeah. yeah, that's true. It reminds me of the Henry Ford quote, whether you think, think you can, or you think you can't, you were right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that pretty much sums that up too. We have mm-hmm. about uh, a little over two minutes left. I do want to take a moment to, first of all, remind people Tom and I will be carrying on this conversation Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. That's our once-a-week nightly show that we do in order to give people a chance to call in who can't really call in during the regular podcasts Monday through Friday uh, at uh, e- either 8 a.m. or 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, cause those are, you know, they're work hours, they're busy hours, but, uh, Tuesday night, now all your excuses are gone. So if you've wanted to call in and talk to us, that's the time to do it. Just tune in, visit the website at LOAToday.net for the live podcast. The player's right there at the top of the page. And then, uh, click the, you'll, you'll see a link there for how to connect to the coaches. Just click the link or, or make, call the phone number. You can do it either way. And, you know, we'll be glad to talk to you. So please be sure to join us on Tuesday night. And, uh, Tom, for somebody who wants a little more personalized service, how do they reach out to you? Uh, they can go to my website, which is urejoy.com, and that's the words Y-O-U-A-R-E-J-O-Y.com. And there's a page on there to sign up for a free coaching session with me, a free hour. So you can bring anything that's up for you in your life, and uh, we'll talk for an hour, and you can find out what my coaching's like, and then decide if you want to do any more with me with no expectation. Very good. And Oh, and by the way, I'll be giving a more full update this afternoon with uh, the podcast I do with Wendy, but there's a lot of progress being made on the book, about 90% done now. So tune yeah, into that podcast great. and I'll give you more details about and, that. And and we're going to bring more fresh perspectives to this discussion on Tuesday night. Absolutely. This uh, idea of the subconscious mind and how it affects us. <laughs> Absolutely. Tom, it's been a pleasure. I look forward to talking to you Tuesday night. Thank you, Walt. Me too. All right. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.